Welcome back to the top of the fourth. And if this is your first time visiting, welcome. I've given to baseball everything I've had, and baseball's given its best back to me today. Thank you. I love you all. David Mark Winfield was born October 3rd, 1951 in St. Paul, Minnesota, and grew up in the city's Rondeau neighborhood. His parents divorced when he was three years old, leaving him and his older brother, Stephen, to be raised by their mother and other extended family members. After graduating from St. Paul Central High School in 1969, he earned a full baseball scholarship to the University of Minnesota, where he excelled in baseball and basketball. During the 1971-72 season, Minnesota won the Big Ten Basketball Championship. Winfield also played college summer baseball for the Alaska Gold Panners of Fairbanks for two seasons and was the MVP in 1972. In 1973, he was named All-American and voted MVP of the College World Series as a pitcher. Winfield's great athletic talents were immediately noticed by scouts. In 1973, he was drafted by four teams in three different sports. The San Diego Padres drafted him fourth overall as a pitcher. In the NBA draft, he was selected by the Atlanta Hawks in the fifth round. In the ABA draft, he was selected by the Utah Stars in the sixth round. Winfield never played college football, but surprisingly, in the NFL draft, he was selected by the Minnesota Vikings in the 17th round. He remains only one of five players ever to be drafted by three professional sports and only one of three players to be drafted by four different leagues. Winfield decided on baseball, and in 1973, Winfield signed with the Padres, and they immediately brought him up to the major league. Even though he was a pitcher, his power at the plate was more valuable in the lineup, and he was placed in right field, where he could still use his strong throwing arm. He batted 277 in 56 games his first season. In the following years, he became an all-star player while improving his talents. In 1977, he appeared in his first all-star game in Yankee Stadium. In 1979, he batted 308 with 34 home runs and 118 RBI. He became a free agent in 1980. In December 1980, Winfield signed a 10-year, $23 million contract with the New York Yankees, which is equivalent to about $83 million in 2023. The Yankees owner at the time, George Steinbrenner, mistakenly thought he was signing Winfield for $16 million, unaware of the meaning of a cost-of-living clause in the contract, which became a misunderstanding that led to an infamous public feud. Winfield became one of the highest-rated players in the game while with the Yankees. In the 1981 American League Division Series, Winfield batted 350 with two doubles and a triple and made some key defensive plays in right field. The Yankees advanced to the World Series where Winfield had a subpar performance and they eventually lost to the Dodgers in six games. After getting his only series hit, Winfield jokingly asked for the ball. George Steinbrenner criticized Winfield for his performance, but many other critics disagreed with Steinbrenner, arguing that Winfield outperformed many of his teammates since four of his seven hits came in games won by the Yankees. Between 1981 and 1984, Winfield was the most productive run producer in the majors. In 1984, he came in second for the batting title with an average of 340. In 1985, Steinbrenner mocked Winfield by saying to the New York Times, quote, Where is Reggie Jackson? We need a Mr. October or a Mr. September. Winfield is a Mr. May, unquote. Throughout the late 1980s, Steinbrenner regularly smeared Winfield's name by leaking derogatory and false stories about Winfield to the media. He also demanded that Yankee managers move him down in the batting order and bench him. Steinbrenner frequently tried to trade him, but Winfield's contract stated that a trade could not happen without his consent. Despite Steinbrenner's antics, Winfield continued to put up excellent numbers with the Yankees averaging over 100 RBI per season between 1982 and 1988, and was selected to play in the All-Star Game every season. Winfield won five Gold Glove Awards while with the Yankees. He missed the entire 1989 season due to an injury, and in 1990, he was traded to the California Angels and won Sporting News Comeback Player of the Year. He hit for the cycle in June 1991, which is when a player hits a single, a double, a triple, and a home run all in the same game. And in the same season, he reached a rare milestone when this happened. Uh oh, that's hit well. And back looking up. And gone number 400. Winfield became just the 24th player in MLB history to reach 400 home runs. On December 19, 1991, at the age of 40, he signed with the Toronto Blue Jays as their designated hitter. 
He batted 290 with 26 home runs and 108 RBI during the 1992 season. Winfield provided leadership and experience combined with his offensive production. The Blue Jays advanced to the World Series. In Game 6, he became Mr. J as he delivered the game-winning two-run double in the 11th inning to win the World Series. After the 1992 season, Winfield became a free agent and signed with his hometown Minnesota Twins. In 1993, he batted 271 with 21 home runs. On September 16, 1993, at age 41, he became a member of a very exclusive club when this happened. Winfield became just the 19th player in MLB history to achieve 3,000 career hits. Winfield was traded to the Cleveland Indians on August 31, 1994. During the 1995 season with the Indians, he didn't play for most of the season due to injury. He decided to retire in 1996 and was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2001 as a San Diego Padre. The decision to be inducted as a Padre bothered Yankees owner George Steinbrenner. However, Winfield sounded a peacemaking statement toward him, saying, quote, He said he regrets a lot of things that happened. We're fine now. Things have changed. Unquote. On July 4, 2006, Winfield was inducted into the College Baseball Hall of Fame in its inaugural class. In 2010, Winfield was selected as one of 28 members of the NCAA's Men's College World Series Legends team. The Big Ten Network named Winfield its number 15th ranked Big Ten Conference icon in 2010. In 1996, Winfield joined the new Major League Baseball on Fox program as studio analyst for their Saturday MLB coverage. From 2001 to 2013, Winfield served as executive vice president and senior advisor of the San Diego Padres. On March 31, 2009, Winfield joined ESPN as an analyst on their Baseball Tonight program. Winfield was the first active athlete to create a philanthropic foundation. He began giving back to the communities in which he played from 1973, his first year with the Padres, when he began buying blocks of tickets to Padres games for families who could not afford to go to games in a program known as Pavilion. Winfield then partnered with San Diego Scripps Clinic, who had a mobile clinic which was brought into the stadium parking lot. When Winfield joined the Toronto Blue Jays, he learned teammate David Wells was one of the Winfield kids who attended Padres games. When Winfield joined the New York Yankees, he set aside $3 million for the Winfield Foundation. Winfield's philanthropic endeavors had as much influence on many of MLB's players as his on-field play. Yankees' Derek Jeter, who grew up idolizing Winfield for both his athleticism and humanitarianism, credits Winfield as an inspiration for his own Turn 2 Foundation. I've given to baseball everything I've had, and baseball's given its best back to me today. Thank you. I love you all. Dave Winfield proved to be a spectacular athlete in college while getting drafted in three different sports from four different leagues. His baseball career and stats speak for themselves, and his off-the-field and post-career presence is still being felt to this day. If you've made it this far in the video, thanks. Let me know down in the comments your opinion on George Steinbrenner's treatment of Winfield. If you like these types of vids, like, subscribe, and ring that bell. Thanks, and stay tuned.